On September 11, 2012, Jeffrey Winehouse met with Henry Folsom and Scott Mertrans outside a gas station in central Missouri. Winehouse was under the impression that he was to receive back his computers, which Folsom had stolen from his property a couple of weeks prior. Yet less than 30 seconds after exiting his vehicle, Winehouse lay on the ground in a pool of his own blood, shot four times by Henry Folsom. Winehouse was held back from the scene, later recovered, and is now caged, awaiting trial. Thus far, the situation can be described as a classic case of police employees protecting their own. You see, Winehouse is an outspoken critic of government corruption, and Folsom and Mertrans happen to be employed at the Missouri State Highway Patrol. The lack of transparency surrounding this incident includes the fact that the investigation was done in-house. Both the shooter and the investigators work at the Missouri State Highway Patrol. The fact that statements made in the press release about the shooting differ objectively from what's heard on an audio clip of the incident that was later leaked. The fact that Winehouse claimed to have video recorded the incident from his vehicle, yet the existence of the footage or the, even the camera itself has never been acknowledged by the investigators. The fact that, contrary to an explicit Missouri state statute, Folsom failed to notify Franklin County Sheriff personnel of his actions executing a search warrant. This episode of Cop Block is brought to you by Freekeen.com. For over 16 years, Winehouse, who goes by the handle Bulletin Man, has been sharing his recounts of double standards perpetuated by so-called public servants through print, a website, and videos. The tagline on his bulletin he publishes says, Go ahead and take one. The man is not looking. So that gives you a little insight into the direction he's coming from. On August 16, 2012, Winehouse posted the video, The Party's Over, in which he expressed discontent with the rampant corruption he saw from those employed in the criminal justice system. Winehouse called for people to occupy the courthouses on September 17th, the 226th anniversary of the Constitution's ratification. The America that I grew up in is long gone. Now, the good news is it can be restored. And it can be restored peacefully if... The powers that be just simply walk away. About a week after that video was posted, Winehouse was visited at home by Henry Folsom and Scott Mertrans, who worked out of Missouri State Highway Patrol's Troop I, based in Rolla, Missouri. Folsom expressed to Winehouse his concern over the August 16th video and asked to enter the dwelling, ultimately seeking the computers. Winehouse rightly refused. Why were Folsom and Mertrans from Troop I, two counties over, visiting Winehouse? If he'd in fact done something wrong, why weren't troopers from Troop C, who claimed jurisdiction in that area, on the scene instead? Further, if Folsom's intention when he arrived at Winehouse's residence was to take the computers, why did he not already have with him a warrant? In fact, the mainstream media has claimed that a search warrant for the computers existed at that time. This background blurb was included in multiple write-ups published at emissourian.com. Investigators with the Highway Patrol's Division of Drug and Crime Control went to serve a search warrant August 22nd for the seizure of computers belonging to Winehouse based on alleged threats directed at law enforcement and judicial officials in Crawford County. Judy Winehouse, Jeff's wife, who was home at the time when Folsom arrived, noted, Jeff insisted on a search warrant before they could enter our house. It took them four hours and asking several judges before they got one. Several judges? The warrant must have been pretty flimsy if several judges refused to sign the request, something that tends to be rubber stamped. Folsom returned to Winehouse's property with the warrant and left a short time later with less than 35 grams of marijuana, morphine, for which Winehouse claims to have a prescription, and Winehouse's computers and other electronics. Why would there take his cameras and computers over a little bit of marijuana? The marijuana and computers and cameras have nothing to do with anything. Notwithstanding the obvious fact, that mere possession of cannabis or morphine doesn't harm anybody, and a signature, even from a man who wears a robe, cannot make an unjust action just. It seems like Folsom just wanted a way into the house to take the computers, which contain years of his documentation. A few days later, Winehouse published a video detailing the experience. And they basically came and stole my uh, First Amendment right the other day by seizing my computers because uh, they smelled pot. So I guess my computers were smoking pot. I, don't, I really don't understand the logic of that. Hi, Carla. How are you today? 
Uh, you know, I kind of troubled Carla. Um, I've got a problem with the uh, some of your troopers there at the Highway Patrol. Uh, and I was hoping to speak to the Colonel about it. Um, I, I'm, my name is Jeff Winehouse. I'm a reporter. And uh, they basically have came in and seized my computers and cameras and um, have taken away my First Amendment right. Wednesday the 22nd, Sergeant H.J. Folsom. I, I will be sure I'm passing Later that day, Winehouse received a call back from Kyle Marquette, an employee of the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Basically, what I wanted to tell you all is uh, you need to fire that man. Because if you don't, uh, we got a big problem. Yeah, you know, I've went to court today to try to get this straightened out, and I couldn't get before a judge. I couldn't get no redress, and I really don't know where to go from here. He alleges I made threats, but you know it's nothing I haven't done before. I've been doing this 16 years, and I kind of go off on a tangent every other year or whatever. Yeah, I'm I'm going to do everything I possibly can. We will be suing whoever we can sue um, because of all this, and and but uh, it's really beyond the court system. I really believe the court system. Is flawed and is, is basically a fraud um, but you know I mean I don't know what else to do here Kyle other than just tell you guys what was up and pray that you do the right thing and relieve Mr. Folsom of his command or of his duty because uh, he's put you guys in a very precarious situation. Winehouse still without his computers the tools of his trade for two weeks wrote and sent a writ of replevin to Folsom and to help bring more transparency to area media and friends. He was asking the Highway Patrol to return his computers and his property by the end of the business day on September 11th, 2012. In his own words, therefore, good cause being shown, petitioner requests that said property be returned into possession of 2360 Highway K, St. Clair, Missouri, 63077 by the close of business September 11th, 2012. In the alternative, it will be confirmed that the Constitution of Missouri has been suspended and that this body is acting in a de facto capacity under the color of law and is a fraud upon the Constitution. In a video update, Winehouse again reiterated that his property be returned by September 11th. Don't always believe what you see, my friends, especially nowadays. But believe this, this is the greatest country in the face of the earth. And one day very soon we're going to be able to turn that flag right side up because we're not going to be in distress anymore. We have every right, duty, responsibility to replace the government today because they have failed their chief design. And when they can come into the office of the publisher and steal his computers, they got to go. So I'm begging you all, just go peacefully. I'm not trying to shut down the whole court system. Only thing I want is everybody who's in there on a nonviolent, victimless offense to walk out, charges dismissed, case closed, with prejudice, they walk free, and everybody's on probation for those things they walk free to. You shouldn't have to pay to stay out of jail. That's extortion. When September 11th did roll around, Winehouse was contacted by Folsom, who arranged to meet him at an MFA gas station just south of St. Clair. They told him that they were going to give him his computers and cameras back. Jeffrey was on top of the world. He felt like a million bucks because he called several people. He was, hey, they're going to give me my stuff back. Unbeknownst to Winehouse, Folsom had another intention. Earlier that day, Folsom had gotten an arrest warrant based on property he'd stolen from Winehouse a couple of weeks earlier. Specifically, possession of under 35 grams of marijuana, possession of a controlled substance, morphine, and the claim that Winehouse's August 16th video equated to tampering with a judicial officer. According to Bill Harlan, Crawford County Deputy Sheriff, at least one FBI employee was also present. Within seconds of emerging from his car, Winehouse was shot. Jeffrey was here two days before on 9912 and talked to uh, me and my boss and basically said that, that they were going to kill him. They were going to do something to him. He said they had been in their vehicles hanging out around his house, around him, and said that he was in fear for his safety. Highway Patrol officers say they had opened fire during a confrontation with an armed man. He's a man known for his criticism of government who's had run-ins with troopers in the past. Now this happened on Highway K in St. Clair, Missouri in Franklin County, about 50 miles from downtown St. Louis. I'm told that he was meeting two troopers, a pre-arranged meeting, but he came armed with a gun. Missouri is an open carry state. It's not against the law. I mean, we get 
people that run through here all the time that's got guns just right out in the open. You don't have to have no carry permit here. You just do it. Same thing with Jeffrey. They don't want you to know that he had a 22 because it makes them look foolish. You don't go start a revolution or a shootout with the cops like they would have you believe with a six shot revolver 22. It just don't happen. You only have a 22 if you're scared and that's all you have. The highway patrol says that he got out of his car and was armed and then started walking toward the troopers. There was a confrontation and then the troopers opened fire. One bullet hit the right side of his head, deflected off his temple, breaking his orbital and exited at the top of his skull. A second bullet grazed his neck. A third bullet broke a couple of bones in his shoulder and the fourth bullet just missed his heart, punctured his left lung and lodged in his back. Winehouse was helivacked 50 miles northeast to Mercy Hospital in St. Louis. The fire department had to wash off the blood. The next day, Sarah L. Eberhardt, an employee of the Missouri State Highway Patrol, issued a press release about the incident. Concise as it was, it brought to mind some questions. No video of the incident has been acknowledged. If the meeting was potentially volatile, why not proactively film? If Folsom believed Winehouse to be dangerous, if a shootout was thought even remotely possible, why did they not show up with backup? If the warrant was to be served, why would the troopers have wanted to meet in such a remote location? After the incident, calls were made to the Missouri State Highway Patrol to solicit more information. Though Al Northrum, the so-called public information officer, was eventually spoken with, he was not too forthcoming. Public information. Yeah, hi, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records, but I was just hoping to talk with somebody about Jeffrey Winehouse, the incident yesterday. Yeah, you, we're not going to uh, give you any statements that you're recording. There's nothing new I can give you on your recorded uh, device right there other than what's out right now. And I, I appreciate your concern and all your willingness to ask questions, but once again, this is an ongoing investigation, and surely you must understand that we have to take care of that first. Well, I have no okay. problem. I have no, Thank sir. You, sir. I, no, hold on, Bye. sir. So hold on, sir. <laughs> Three days after the shooting, Mike Arthur, one of the few who have continued to vocally support Winehouse, was visited by Adam Carnell, a Cuba, Missouri police employee. Watch this video to learn his story in detail, but briefly... It was a situation not unlike that which Winehouse had mentioned had happened to him. Carnell had manipulated a firearm that wasn't his to create a situation to bring about a desired conclusion. In this case, getting Arthur, who's dubbed a felon, to handle a loaded firearm. I have been not, I'm not on no probation, no parole. I've not been found guilty of any crime, but yet they have five felonies against me. And before I could bond out of jail, I was to be fitted with this tracking bracelet. And they charged me $75 a week for this. $300 a month, which is basically blatantly ransom and stealing, but all because I'm friends with uh, Mr. Winehouse and I'm trying to do things, you know, to make sure the man gets justice, you know. This practice, squeezing the support base of someone targeted, is frequently employed by those wearing badges. Winehouse was released from the hospital. He went to stay with his brother to continue his recovery. The hearing was held based on a motion submitted by Winehouse's then lawyer to reduce or drop the three charges levied at him. Winehouse outlined that in over 50 scheduled appearances, he'd never missed a court date, that his roots were in Missouri, and that he was not a flight risk. Winehouse also noted that he had never reached for his weapon and that his hands were in fact raised over his head when he was shot. The motion Winehouse had submitted to drop his charges was taken under advisement, then he was ruled against. Winehouse had strolled into that room on his own, he left with men wearing Missouri State Highway Patrol badges and has been caged ever since. The day before Winehouse was due to have a bond hearing, Parks went in front of a grand jury and got them to indict Winehouse on five threats, all felonies, including resisting felony arrest, two counts of armed criminal action, and two counts of attempted assault on a law enforcement officer. The indictment used that day by Parks indicated that Winehouse harassed or intimidate Judge Kelly Parker a claim that differentiated from that put forth on the August 22nd search warrant filled out by Folsom, which claimed that Winehouse made threats against judicial officers and prosecutors of Crawford County. Why the change? Besides outlining these five new charges, Parks presented no evidence to expand on his claims of resisting, criminal action, or attempted assault. Yet he got the indictment he was seeking. He was accepted at his word. His case moved from the Associate Circuit Court to the Circuit Court. And by the way, Parks, the prosecutor, was the same person who on August 22nd had notarized the search warrant Folsom used to enter Winehouse's property and take his computers. 